Okay, so one of the things you get in a game of Claim It are these um, six little squatter markers, each with the uh, numbers one through six on them. You're gonna get uh, five different colors for uh, player tokens, and um, it's a two to five player game, so you can either use uh, two to five of them. And let's see, you get these uh, black markers, and these black markers are your claim markers that you'll be using. And then you also get three die to use to roll. And uh, so this is going to kind of work like an early version of uh, dice drafting, sort of. So I'll show that to you in a moment um, and how that works. You have the board here and you can see you have a one through six grid here. And there's all these numbers out here. And if you're curious what the numbers are, it's just that um, one one is one one or two one two, one. It's just the spot on the grid. That's all it is to let you know. So if you, you're going to be rolling dice and what you're going to do on the start of your turn. So I'll just get started. So let's say I'm going to start here with the green player and I'm just going to put a little green marker here to remember who I am playing at the moment. So green's going to go first and what he's going to do is he's going to roll his three die. And so he rolled a one, a three, and a two. And so what he can do is he's got his claim markers. All right, he's got numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six for his, um, or squatter markers. And so he could either use the number one squatter marker, the number two squatter marker, or the number three squatter marker. Four, five, and six, he didn't roll a four, five, or six, so he can't use those. Now to determine which one he's going to do, he's going to decide, well, where does he want to start setting up, um, claims and the way you win the game is at the end of the game the most um, markers you have that are in a contiguous line like this would be four points you know if at the end of the game he had four things there that would be four points that'd be four points that'd be four points uh, so whoever has the most if you know another color had one two three four five then the other color would win so you're trying to decide um, what was that a two trying to decide where to start placing your claims. So do you want to squat with a number one, a number two, or a number three? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to have your dice, and additionally to so those being your optional squatter numbers you can use, they are also the coordinates you use. So I could take a three squatter marker and put it at the coordinates of one and two where they meet, and my three, the three die could go there, right, which would become the squatter token or you know he could go to the one spot there and the two spot there and make a three there or he could go one three where those come together he could use the two all right or one three here and use the two where they come together there it's up to him what he wants to do so let's just say he goes at the uh let's say he goes two three and so he's going to use the one squatter marker all right, so he's potentially going to be squatting there. And there's a push, push your luck element to this, so we'll see. I'll show you how that works. So he's going to roll again, and now he has four, five, and six. So that means these are the potential squatters he has to use, four, five, and six. So one thing he might want to do is spread out in different spots of the board. Because as other players come in, he might want to kind of have options to where he wants to build up. Or he might want to, you know, hunker down in an area right away. Uh, the closest thing to 2-3 would be 4-5, which would mean he would place his 6 squatter marker there, or what have you. Um, but let's just say he's going to do 6-5, which leaves him with the 4 die to go there. So he's going to put a number 4 there. All right, so he has the one in the four use, so he's gonna roll all three die again. All right, he rolled a one, three, and a four. All right, so the three is still available, the one is not available, and the four is not available. All right, now if he had rolled two ones or two fours, and so he had like one, one, four, or four, four, one, or something like that, his turn would be over uh, because there would be none of those potential squatter spots left. And because he didn't stop his turn, he would have lost all his progress. So all his little squatter markers would be removed. But he is lucky he has a four that he can place. So since the only available, or no, sorry, he has a three, 
he can place. So since the only available squatter token still left available is the three, he can only go at one four coordinate. So he could go there, so one four there, or four and one there. So let's just say he goes one four here because it's kind of up there. So he's gonna place his number three there. All right, so now he has to decide, does he want to roll again? If he doesn't roll a two, five, or six, he's gonna lose these spots. So this is where you kind of press your luck. And let's say he presses his luck, so he's gonna roll again. And he rolled a one, a three, and a five. So there is a five available. So he got lucky there. So he can either go one, three here, and place a five, place his five squatter marker there, or one, three here, place five there. So let's just say he's gonna go here, and he's gonna place his five there. And now if he's gonna roll again, he has to roll a two or six to have any chance of placing. So let's say green says, you know what? I am good. And so I'm going to take uh, these spots that I rolled. So he's gonna take his greens and he's gonna replace these markers here with green player color uh, tokens. And so that is where he is starting to set up claim. Now he doesn't have them. To have a claim permanently, you have to have a claim marker down with your token on top of it, and that has not happened yet. So somebody could come in and uh, steal these spots out from under them. All right, so let's see if that happens. So let's say it's yellow's turn now, so I'm gonna just move this over here so I remember I'm playing yellow. And yellow's gonna roll. And your yellow rolls a two, a five, and a six. All right, well look, if he wanted to, if yellow wanted to, he could just go six, five, and the coordinates is where? Well, it's right here where green is. And he could screw green out of that spot. And just to show you it, I'm gonna have him do that. So he's gonna put, uh, sorry, but it's not, so he's gonna put his two, uh, squatter token here, and he's gonna put it on top of the green. He hasn't taken them yet because uh, since it is a press your luck game, if he rolls to a point where he can't place any of his um, squatter tokens and he has to remove all the ones he put out there, this two would get removed and the green that's below it would stay. So green's not out yet because um, yellow might press his luck too much. So yellow goes again and he rolls again and he rolls a one, a four, and a three. Well, if he wanted to. <laughs> He could uh, kind of be mean again, and he sees greens forming something here. It's, it's potentially three points, so let's say he goes ahead and he uses the four squatter token to take that spot away from green, and he rolls again. All right, one, four, three. If he wanted to, he could move in on green here also, but uh, let's say he instead, let's see, let's go three, four, Four over here. Let's say he's going to put the one there, so that'll be the one. And let's say he does that. And a three, five, six, he has to roll to keep playing. And he rolled a three, five, and a six, so he has options. All right, well, uh, let's see. He could go six, five, which would put him up here, and he could kind of try and work up on that corner because he has a three. So let's say he does that. He goes there. It's a three. All right, so he goes, all right. I am done. I'm gonna, that's gonna finish my turn. So now this replaces that. This replaces that. This replaces this. And what happens is the green token goes back to the green player. And this will replace that. Green token goes back to the green player. And uh, it's the next player's turn, which is orange. So orange does the same thing, he rolls. And we got a two, two, and a four. All right, so let's say he just goes a uh, two, two, and a four. And so he goes, all right, so I use my four. I am going to place the four squad marker there. Rolls again. Four, four, two this time. Um, let's say two, four. He can't use the four, actually, because he's used the four, so he has to use the two. So his coordinates have to be this. So he uses the two. Okay, so now let's say he rolls again. I'll just show you. Um, let's say he rolls the die and he rolls a two and a two and a three. All right, or let's say, or I'll, okay, a two, two, a three. So he could go two, two, and since he has the, um, 
squatter marker there, it doesn't matter what this die was. If your coordinates match where you already have a squatter token, you automatically put a claim token on top of it. So imagine instead of rolling a 2, 2, 3, he had rolled 2, 2, 4. All right, let's say that was his roll. And you see the four squatter tokens used and the two squatter tokens used. So you would think, well, both those squatter tokens are gone. He turns over. Well, it's not because if you are able to make a claim with matching coordinates to an already existing squatter token, it doesn't matter what your third die number is. So even though had, you know, this worked out a little differently, if he had rolled 224 and he didn't have anything here, let's say it looked like this, all right, well then he would have, his turn would be over. Um, well, two, four, he would have, so let's say it was there. All right, his turn, turn would have been over because there's no way he could get a squatter token on top of any of these spots. But since he can do it here, it doesn't matter that he rolled a number he can't use. So he puts his squatter claim token on top of his squatter token and he rolls again. And now he rolls, all right, two, two, six. Well, he already has that, so there's no benefit there. So he could go two, six over here. Well, he doesn't have a two, he can't do that. All right, well look. All right, he he can't place a two squatter token. He can only place a six squatter token. But he already ha has that. So, well, I've never had that happen. I think though, I mean, there would be no reason to be able to put another claim token. So I think he would have pressed his luck and lost. So let's just say that's what happened. So he could have had he could have had a permanent claim on the board, but he screwed up and he rolled too many times and he lost it. So Orange gets nothing, nothing out on the board. He pressed his luck too much. So in comes Purple, Purple rolls. Purple's got two, two, six. So let's say Purple moves into that spot, two, two, six. And he rolls again, two, three, four. Uh, let's say he goes three, two and he's going to put his four on top of green to screw over green get him out of there and rolls again one a three and a all right so he has the one he rolled a one three and a five let's see one three one three oh look at that all right well he could go one three and use his five to screw out yellow and let's say he does that and uh let's say he rolls one more time and let's say he rolls oh all right good one Three, that was a three, three, and he rolled a four, which means he gets to put his squatter token there. And he goes, all right, that's it. I'm stopping. I don't want to lose my permanent spot. So he stops his roll and he gets to put his token here. He gets to put a token here and this will go back to green. He gets to put a token here. This goes back to yellow and what happens is the squatter token goes on top of, or I'm sorry, yeah, like this. Your your um, thing goes on top of your your player piece goes on top of the claim marker. Uh, if he had rolled, let's say it was his turn, it went around. And it was turn. It was his turn again, and he rolled. Let's say he rolled a two, a two, and any number he wanted. Let's say it was a two again. He could put the um, claim on top of his own color. All right, and it, because it's on top of his own color, it doesn't mean he has it yet because he's continuing to press his luck. You know, he rolls again and sees what happens. But if I, he goes, okay, I'm done rolling, then you would just move the claim underneath it. So when this stops, well, it says here on the board, right here. For two players, the first person who has 13 permanent claims, so that would be with uh, the claim marker under your player token, 13 of those out there, the game stops and then you find out who has the most pieces that are in an area together. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so uh, with three players, nine, four players, seven, five players, six. All right, so at the end of the game, the board looks something like all right. 
it's the end of the game and it looks like this here. All right, you're going to find where you have the most of your player markers grouped together. And it doesn't matter if they're just by themselves or if they have a claim marker under them. That's irrelevant at the end of the game. The only thing the claim marker does is it permanently locks in your spot on the board and it cannot be removed. So yellow's biggest spot is here. One, two, three, four, five points. Green has one, two, three, four, five, six. Orange only has two. Purple only has sections of one. So green would win because he has six together and that would be the end of the game and green would win the game. All right, so that is, that's Claim It. All right, hey everybody, so what do I think of Claim It? Well, I actually just bought this game to fill out my geek list of uh, games that need a video and this one needed a video so I went and bought it. So um, I don't really play many Press Your Luck games. Uh, these little components here, the little plastic pieces, uh, you know, they're pretty good quality, um, so there's no problem with it. As you saw when I was, uh, the setup I had, things were sliding around. They definitely can slide around easily, so I could imagine if you're playing this game at a table and someone bumps the table, things could kind of move around a bit. So it might have been good if there was some kind of weight so they didn't slide as much. Um... The dice factor, uh, I don't play many uh, games where there's a lot of luck involved. If there is dice, it really depends. It has to be a specific kind. But initially I did kind of like the dice thing. Um, what's interesting is as the game goes on, you know, I was talking about how, okay, if you roll, let's say you rolled these three numbers. You rolled a one, uh, a three, and a six. All right. So you're looking at the board and you're thinking, all right, well, there's a six here and a three down here. So those come together up here at this spot. Well, and that leaves you with, uh, what did I say, one through six? That leaves you with the one marker you can uh, place. So let's say you have, this was available. You go, okay, well, then I'm just going to claim this spot. Well, what happens, which is interesting, is as people permanently get claims, you know, they have their, um, their black below their player marker. If there is somebody permanently here... What happens is the options really, really, really start narrowing down. And so the press your luck element of the game uh, really gets tight. <coughs> As there's more and more permanent spots where you can't kick someone off, you know, you only have so many coordinates you can get with three dice. Uh, let's see, so you'd have one four or four one, so that's, you know, a set. You have one six or six one, or you have four six six four, so two four six. You essentially have six potential spots you're going to be able to try and claim on the board but if one of the numbers you roll is a um, squatter token spot that is already you already used it well then that just really limits your options from six down to four if two of them have been used it eliminates down to we only have two options and if those two options are permanent are spots that already have permanent settlers on it well then you're just out of luck so it really is just a press your luck game. So if um, if press your luck game interests you, well then there you go. This one might be uh, one you might enjoy. It's uh, pretty cheap. Uh, you know, it's not going for much money online. So maybe you could pick it up for ten bucks or something like that. Uh, maybe a little filler game. I'm not sure how long it lasts. I'm sure you could look at the uh, the game maybe thirty minutes or less uh, for a game. And it's something I see that you could like just have sitting around if you're waiting for people to show up at the game group and you're just <coughs> waiting for the real game to start. Something you can kind of do to fill the time is how I look at this. All right, so hope that was helpful.